Here's Chestnut Grove Baptist Church. I used to go to church there when I was a kid. It was at that church that I first uh, made a profession for Jesus, whether I was altogether serious about it or not. I know I was scared of hell then, so <laughs> I certainly did go up to the front and became uh, got baptized. So many years later, I kind of renewed that whole commitment to Jesus. And so I am a Christian. And so you're going to meet a lot of Christian people, old-time, I guess, Bible-believing Christians and people that really, really do take reading the Bible seriously. One of the biggest problems with Christianity today is that most Christians come off as judgmental or whatever because they don't read their Bible. Uh, a true Christian is a very humble person. They don't judge other people because Jesus said the only one who had a right to judge was himself and God. And so... Uh, a true Christian has great compassion and love for other people, just care about other people and want to see other people go to heaven. So if you got the, you know, maybe you got the wrong idea about Christians that maybe have just not read their Bible enough or not prayed enough or not really taken their uh, faith seriously, it's a very humbling thing to be a Christian. You got to be willing to humble yourself and accept just the forgiveness that Jesus provided. Okay, so we are going up to the old cemetery. I think this is right. You have to forgive me for the quality of this video. I know it's not great. Aha, call a cemetery. Here's where we're going. Okay. How you folks doing today? Uh, yeah, Pretty good. I'm Peggy Carroll, and this is my husband, Burdette Carroll. Peggy and Burdette Carroll. Right. Burdette is a cool name. Well, Peggy's a good name, too. Mm -hmm. Burdette, how'd you get that name? Well, I don't know. That was my dad's middle name, and since I was the 13th kid, I think he'd run out of names. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here at the College Cemetery, and, and tell me about what y'all been doing. Well, we've been... Uh, putting flowers on before the decoration at tomorrow which um, my family's buried here most of them are McKinney's uh, most of McKinney them family so. uh, Briscoe Esther McKinney and and their kids most of them and my sister's buried here so mother and dad and, yeah that, yeah that Briscoe is uh, where is he right here I see that and her grandparents now do y'all still live up here? No, we don't. We, don't. we live in Marion. Live in Marion. A lot of people came off the hill that grew up up here, didn't That's they? True. They did. That's true. It's uh, a little easier, maybe in some ways there. So. I mean, was it easier to make a living down there? Is that what it was? Yeah, I or? think most people left the mountains areas for that reason. Uh, you know, you could find work, plants, mills, and different things, and there wasn't that much going on in, on the mountain. Did you? Did y'all grow up up here? Uh, yes, she I did. did. I grew up over on the Salto River. Well, that's still up here, though. Yeah. You're still up in the mountains. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up up here? Well, I guess it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. I did, we did. had a long way to go to school, pretty much, but it, it didn't bother me that much. Wait, which part, of, where did you grow up exactly around here? Um, up here, in Little Switch. She was over on the McKinney Mine Road. McKinney Mine uh -huh. Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of... We had a lot of walking to do back then. There wasn't, well, a lot of people had cars and a lot of people didn't, but really you, you kind of walked when you went. I had grandparents that lived up this way and I always walked up here. Maybe every week, maybe a time or two every week, which was what? Oh, it's several mile, miles. Several miles. Mile and, and a half. Mostly when you went somewhere, you just, you walked for the most part when I was, you know, when I was small. Yeah. Well, people seem to have more time to visit back then than they do now. They did, and I, I always at my grandmother's on Sunday, there was all the family gathered, and they had dinner, and uh, we enjoyed that, all the grandkids. All the uh, automation that we've got today is supposed to uh, give us more free time and seem like it worked in reverse. <laughs> 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I amen to that. I think, yeah. it, I think so too. You just don't spend time with people much anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, Everything. unless it's your just obedient family. So we had a lot of snow too, and sometimes you wouldn't go to school for several weeks. We didn't at times. <laughs> Did you still go to school in Spruce Pine back then? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, I went to Harris High or Harris Elementary in Harris High. Yeah. And there was a school above my house, but that was long before my Your time. time. Yeah. What does it mean to y'all to be able to come back up and, and visit and, and, and see the old place and all? Just to come out of the valley and come back up to the hills, I guess. Well, it's uh, we like to visit up here, but it uh, brings back a lot of memories coming. And, uh, well, I think... Uh, of course, most of my relatives that lived up here, most of them, I don't have any left, you know, many relatives up here. I mean, close relatives. I think it'll always feel like home, always... You know, it's home. Especially up here, it's just a, a special place. Uh, it really is. When it got three thirty or four o'clock in the evening in the mountains up here, it'd always start cooling off. Don't matter how hot it'd been, and used to. I don't know now because I don't stay up here, but it used to be. You didn't have to have air conditioning. You could have windows up, and after three thirty or four o'clock, it started cooling off. And night come, it was pleasant, good sleeping mm -hmm. weather. We're up here on August 4th, and it feels like it's 70 degrees. That's right. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about the fact that it seems to be a dying kind of thing, the decoration, right? Why do you think that is? I don't know. I think that goes back to the, everybody's so busy, and most people's moved away from where they was born and brought up. And I think that's a big reason. And most people has extended families of their own now that they, that they brought up somewhere else, and they're having to do things with their kids and their grandchildren, and they just don't. They just don't have time, seem like, to get back like they used to. Do you think it's important to gather around and remember folks? Sure. Well, I guess it is. I do. Yeah. Whose grave did y'all decorate today? Briscoe was one of them, but did, was there anybody and, else you uh, decorated? Uh, uh, Carl and Bonnie McKinney and uh, A.B. and Betty Banner. And, I remember A.B. Banner. Uh -huh. Yeah, Tracy and uh, Dicey. Dar there, Dicey. Yeah, that's my... That's her uh, niece. Yeah. Of the people that you're here to remember, can you think of a good story, uh, maybe a funny story or heartwarming kind of story about those people that you remember? Yeah. A.B., for instance. Uh, d d d tell me something you, you particularly remember him for. Well, A.B. was uh, one of the best woodworkers uh, mm -hmm. in woods of anybody probably has ever on this mountain. He could Re build anything out of wood. Well, like, like what kind of stuff did he do? Well, he could build any kind of cabinets, tables, end tables, coffee tables, uh, full cabinets in a house. It didn't matter. He could. In fact, there's all that dress up on uh, Switzerland and uh, woodwork that's around to make it look like Switzerland. He did all that he stuff made, at the Soleil? He built all of that. Yeah. Really? Sure I did, did not know that. So A.B. Yeah. Banner was one did. See, now there you go. That's something right. I had no clue about. Yeah, Can, he, did, he did that. He had a real good up-to-date shop, woodworking shop there above his house. Her great, great, was it your great, great grandpa, the Merritt? That was daddy, Merritt. Yeah, he, it, Merritt was granddaddy's was daddy. Was this Briscoe's mm -hmm. daddy? Yeah. Now, the tale is on him that he went from up here to get some seed corn to plant in the spring. Seed corn, yeah. Seed mm -hmm. corn. But he didn't come back for something like about a year because he went and joined the uh, Spanish, Spanish American, American War. <laughs> Just took a notion to do it All right. and didn't tell anybody? That, that's what Granddaddy used to tell, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. and didn't come back till after that war was over. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is true or false, but you know there is a merit corn now that everybody plants. Really? Yeah. So it might be named after him. Well, he went off to get seed corn and fought in a war. Did he bring corn back, you reckon? Oh, I don't that's know. What, that's what we wondered. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a merit sure corn that people raise. It's a sweet corn, you know, for in gardens and things. So I don't know. The, tell me about the Christian element of doing this kind of thing, too. Because I, I, we'll have preaching tomorrow and there'll be some singing and stuff. Mm -hmm. what, what does that mean to you? It shows a lot of respect for the people that's going on. Yeah, y'all believe you see your family again, don't you? Sure. Well, I'm hoping to. Amen. Yeah, absolutely.